Hi, I'm Steve. This is the third video in a series on how to make generative art. In this video, we're going to be learning about a bunch of shapes you can use, how to grab colors from a color palette, and we're also learning about the random function. Now, what does a random function have to do with shapes? Nothing, but neither one of these takes a long time to talk about, so I crammed them together. We're going to start with random. Random is the heart and soul of generative art, and let's just put in here a random uh, five right here and I'm going to print this to the console uh, so let's do in front of this print open parentheses and then we'll put a parentheses on there you can put a function inside of a function that's what I'm doing right here and if I hit start you'll see a number appear down here. This is a random number between zero and five. Now we don't actually need the draw function for what we're gonna do right now. Let's take out this curly bracket down to here and hit backspace and we still get the same thing. Start uh, and there's a new number, a random number. Now when we say random, it's not completely random. Of course, it's pseudo random. Uh, it's calculating a random number based on the time that the computer starts and how long the program has been running. It takes that information and it does some trigonometry. It doesn't matter. It just works. Now it's giving me a number between 0 and 5 right now. If I were to put a 2 in front of this and a comma, now it's giving me a number between 2 and 5 instead of 0 and 5. So if I wanted a number between... 20 and 50, I could put 20, 50, and now we get a random number between 20 and 50. So what can we do with this? Well, we can use it for location. We can use it for color. Let's try that. After the background, we'll put a circle. Let's do 255 comma 0 comma 0. That should make a red circle because we are in uh, RGB mode. And let's start off by just putting the circle at 200, 200, and making it 300 diameter. There we go. Now, what if we put random right here? So we said random, and I'm going to show you another thing that you can do. Uh, if I type in width, you see it turns pink. This is whatever the width of the canvas is going to be the number uh, so in this case, we have a 400 with canvas, and so that number is going to be 400. If I made this a 500 with canvas, then width would be 500 there. And we can get rid of this. We'll comment that out. And let's hit play. It looks like it's in the center, but it's not quite. Let's hit play again. Now it shifted over. Now it shifted to the left. Awesome. So let's do random for the height as well. And you can use the word height in here to get the height of the canvas. So we'll hit play. And now the circle is going all over the place on the canvas. We could do random for the size. Now we don't want it completely random. Let's do something like 20 minimum and 200 maximum. And now hit play. And now we're getting different size circles in different places on the canvas. We could change this random. This is the red value. And if we do that random 255, we get 0 to 255. So we should get different shades of red. Let's add random 255 here and random 255 here. So we'll get random R, random G, random B. And now we're getting different colors, different spots, different sizes. Now I said that the program calculates a random number based on when the program starts. Well, you can override that. Let's put in random seed a thousand or so, it doesn't matter. And we're going to get a circle here, this color. Let's pl hit play again, and we get the same thing. Play again, we get the same thing. Let's try changing this to 100. We get a different circle in a different place. If I hit play again, 
same circle, same place. Using a random seed is going to be helpful later on when you're designing your art and you want to be able to change one thing and see the results of that change. But if you have everything constantly random, then it's hard to see the results of one little tweak you make to your art. Now, the random is going to be affected by how many randoms came before it. So if I say take this fill and change this back to a hard number, 100 say, we're going to get a circle in a different spot. Let's uh, put that back to random 255. And so right now we're getting kind of a dark green. If I take out this random and say it's only at 200 width and hit play, we still get a dark green. So this color is the same because that came before it. But where was the height of this circle before I put that 200 in there? Let's put the random width back. Now notice that the random height is all the way at the top of the canvas. But if I change this to 200, the random height is now down here. That's because there wasn't a random right before this. So that changes the result of this random. All right, for now, that's all I want to say about random. And now we're going to talk about shapes. So let's do a different shape. Right now we've got a circle. Let's put all this back so it's not random anymore. And what if we change this from circle, we change this to rect, which is rectangle, R-E-C-T. And we get a square, although it's off the canvas. Let me change this to a 100. So it's starting in the middle of the canvas right here. Uh, so the default for a square is that it starts at the upper uh, left, and then it's going 100 wide, 100 down, if we have only three uh, arguments here. If I put in a 100, 150, we're going to see 100 wide, 150 tall. There is something called a rect mode, and we can change this rect mode. So rect mode, notice there's a capital M, and we're going to type in center all in caps. And now the rectangle is centered. Instead of the XY position being uh, here, the XY position is now here. So often rect mode center is going to be helpful for you. Let's do a fill of 150 just to make something gray after this, and we'll make a triangle. So with a triangle, you need to specify three XY positions. So let's do uh, 100 comma 100, then we'll do 300 comma 200, and then we'll do uh, 100 comma uh, 500. I don't know. All right, there we go. We got a triangle. Let's make the triangle a little taller so we can see more of it. So if we look at the second XY here, uh, if I move that up, say, we'll get that. So there's the Y. Uh, that's pretty much everything to say about triangles. We have a point, and we can specify the point at, say, 150, 150. And you can barely see it. It's very tiny right here, but there is a point. Now we can make that bigger with stroke weight. So we'll say stroke weight. Uh, let's make it 10 so it's really clear. There we go. We got a dot stroke weight of 10. Notice it's not gray because it's using the color of the stroke, not the fill. So if I wanted a different stroke color, I could do stroke and we could do random 255 and now we're getting different random of all gray colors. We also have a line. Line goes between one XY position and another XY position. So we can go from 100 comma 100 to 300 comma 300 and there is a line it's using the same stroke as this one. So we hit play and we're getting different colored lines. We can make an ellipse. An ellipse is like a circle, except you can specify the width and the height. So we'll make the ellipse at 300 comma 300. 
And if I only do 200, it's going to give me a perfect circle. But if I do 200 comma 100, then we're going to see an ellipse. I'll hit play a few times so you can see that better. A quad or quadrilateral is four points. So let's do 100 comma 100 to 300 comma 100. And then down, they have to be in order, either clockwise or counterclockwise. 300, 300, and then we'll do 100 comma 300. And we get a square, but I can change this. Instead of 100, 300, we'll make it 100, 200, and you get this. Let's do something uh, a little interesting. We'll change this last number to a random number. And we'll make it between 200 and 400. How about that? Let's see what that does. Let's make that stroke uh, black. That's kind of annoying. There we go. So we're getting different quadrilaterals. And of course, we can randomize all of these points to get a whole slew of different quadrilater quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals. That is hard to say. There's also a square function that uses three numbers, but nobody uses square because rect will also take three numbers and it's shorter. The arc is next. I often have to stop and look at the reference page for this one. So we'll go to our reference page and look up arc. And if we look down at the bottom here, this is the most helpful part, I think. You've got an X, a Y, a width, a height, and then a start and a stop. So the start has to do with the angle that it's starting, and the stop is the angle that it stops at. Back to our code, I've commented out all of this stuff, so we've got a clean canvas. And so we'll start our arc at 200, 200. That's going to be the center of the arc. And we'll go, uh, let's go 200, 200 for the size of the arc as well. And then we'll start at angle zero and end at angle 180. And now we have an arc. Um, and it's not giving me what I thought it was going to give me because I forgot that it is in radians mode for angles. We need to change this mode to degrees. We're going to do that with a function called angle mode. Notice a large M there. And we're going to put degrees in here. And now we're getting angles in degrees. And let's see if I did this uh, 0 to 90 degrees. So you see that shows that this is zero degrees right here, and this is 90 degrees here. And if I wanted uh, 270 degrees, then it would go all the way around to here. Now this 200, 200 here is not a radius, it's a diameter, so keep that in mind. Uh, we could change this to 200 comma 100 and we get a, a curved arc. Now this arc has the outline along the curve, but there's no outline uh, along these straight edges. If we go back to our reference page, you'll see that there's a mode here, which is optional. When it's in brackets like that, it means it's an optional argument. And the mode can be chord, pi, or open. So let's try those. We have a chord was one. That looks like that. And then we have pi was one. And the other one was open. Looks like that. All right. I like pie the best. Pumpkin pie, apple pie. Now, besides arc, we also have a curve. And if you look at the XY coordinates, uh, you'll see two XY coordinates. One uh, here, and then this one is XYZ. That is in 3D mode, which we'll get to later. So this says that there's a beginning control point, a first point, a second point, and an ending control point. Let's copy one of these and we'll paste it in our code. And we get this tiny little curve right here. We can change this to 165, we get that. So that's just an anchor point. So it's not actually changing the point itself. If I put 165 here, that should change the curve 
Curves are a little weird. I don't use them that often. I should mention that there's also something called a vertex. We're going to get to vertexes later. And there's also something called a curve vertex, which we will also get to later. Now, I said in this video at the beginning, we were going to also learn to get a color from a color palette. I don't know why I decided to put that in this video, but let's do it. Now, here I have copied a small color table here. It's one, two, three, four, five color palettes. And these each have five colors in each palette. And I'm going to get rid of the draw function. Don't need that. You see down here, I've got this function called get color. This is a function that I created, and it's going to grab a color from the color palette table. So we're going to need to choose a palette first. And if I say palette equals uh, zero, we can do that. And then I can say get color. And if I say get color two, and let's uh, fill with HSB, and then we'll make a circle at 200 comma 200 comma and make it size 200. So we've got this yellow color. So what is this doing? It is, uh, I've asked for palette zero color two. And so palette zero is this one right here. So this is zero, this is one, two, three, and four. And the color, this is color zero, this is color one, this is color two. So if I asked for color zero, two, then I've asked for 43, 55, 91. Let's just copy that, fill, and paste that. You'll see that I get the same color. I'll explain this a little bit later. Right now, all you need to know is that you can use this to get a color from a color table. And I'll just leave this code in the video description and you can copy all of this code and then you could also copy the CSV table or, or just copy the whole thing. And then you could build a program around it. But just grabbing a color that you're specifying is kind of boring. So what we want to do is we want to randomize this. And we say random five because there's, did I do five palettes? But if I just say random five, that's going to give me this decimal. And the decimal is not going to work with this CSV table. So I need to have an integer. Uh, I'm gonna floor this. And you might say, why don't you round it? Well, if I take a number between zero and five, and really the largest number it's gonna give me is 4.99999. Um, if I round that, I'm gonna get numbers between zero and five, when actually I want numbers between zero and four. Also, the numbers on the end will have 50% of the chances of the numbers in the middle. So in order for all of them to have the same chance, uh, it's better to floor this. So we floor this and we're gonna get a random color palette. And then we could also get a random uh, color from our color palette. And there's five colors in each palette. And we're gonna need to floor that as well so that we don't get an error message. And I have to get rid of this right here and now we're getting different palettes and different colors from those color palettes. I'm saving this little bit of code. There'll be a link to this in the video description. So I'm wrapping up this video here. We learned about random. We learned about floor, learned about different shapes. We learned a little bit about how to grab a color from a color palette table. Next video is about variables. I, it's going to get more exciting, I promise. The fifth video, it's going to really ramp up. We're going to get into for loops, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so next video, variables. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.